Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you find yourself watching this video. I pray that you have had an amazing and blessed day. Welcome back to Jesus in the Center. My name is Ebony, and we are going to continue on with our Bible in a Year reading plan. Today, we will be starting day 19, which covers Exodus chapters 21 through 25. So let's get reading. Exodus 21. These are the regulations you must present to Israel. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he may serve for no more than six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave, he shall leave single. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife must be freed with him. If his master gave him a wife while he was a slave and they had sons or daughters, then only the man will be free in the seventh year, but his wife and children will still belong to his master. But the slave may declare, I love my master, my wife, and my children. I don't want to go free. If he does this, his master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door or doorpost and publicly pierce his ear with an owl. After that, the slave will serve his master for life. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of, of six years as the men are. If she does not satisfy her owner, he must allow her to be bought back again. But he is not allowed to sell her to foreigners since he is the one who broke the contract with her. But if the slave's owner arranges for her to marry his son, he may no longer treat her as a slave, but as a daughter. If a man who has married a slave wife takes another wife for himself, he must not ne neglect the rights of the first wife to food, clothing, and sexual intimacy. If he fails in any of these three obligations, she may leave as a free woman without making any payment. Anyone who assaults and kills another person must be put to death. But if it was simply an accident permitted by God, I will appoint a place of refuge where the slayer can run for safety. However, if someone deliberately kills another person, then the slayer must be dragged even from my altar and be put to death. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. Kidnappers must be put to death, whether they are caught in possession of their victims or have already sold them as slaves. Anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. Now suppose two men quarrel and one hits the other with a stone or fist and the injured person does not die, but is confined to bed. If he is later able to walk outside again, even with a crutch, the assailant will not be punished, but must compensate his victim for lost wages and provide for his full recovery. If a man beats his male or female slave with a club and the slave dies as a result, the owner must be punished. But if the slave recovers within a day or two, then the owner shall not be punished since the slave is his property. Now suppose two men are fighting and in the process they accidentally strike a pregnant woman so she gives birth prematurely. If no further injury results, the man who struck the woman must pay the amount of compensation the woman's husband demands and the judges approve. But if there is further injury, the punishment must match the injury, a life for a life, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a, a hand for a hand, a foot for a foot, a burn for a burn, a wound for a wound, a bruise for a bruise. If a man hits his male or female slave in the eye and the eye is blinded, he must let the slave go free to compensate for the eye. And if a man knocks out the tooth of his male or female slave, he must let the slave go free to compensate for the tooth. If an ox gores a man or a woman to death, the ox must be stoned and his flesh may not be eaten. In such a case, however, the owner will not be held liable. But suppose the ox had a reputation for goring and the owner had been informed but failed to keep it under control. If the ox then kills someone, it must be stoned and the owner must also be put to death. However, the dead person's relatives may accept payment to compensation for the loss of life. The owner of the ox may redeem his life by paying whatever is demanded. The same regulation applies if the ox gores a boy or a girl. But if the ox gores a slave, either male or female, the animal's owner must pay the slave's owner 30 silver coins and the ox must be stoned. Suppose someone digs or uncovers a pit and fails to cover it, and then an ox or a donkey falls into it. 
the owner of the pit must pay full compensation to the owner of the animal, but then he gets to keep the dead animal. If someone's ox injures a neighbor's ox and the injured ox dies, then the two owners must sell the live ox and divide the price equally between them. They must also divide the dead animal. But if the ox had a reputation for goring, yet its owner failed to keep it under control, he must pay full compensation, a live ox for the dead one, but he may keep the dead ox. That is the end of Exodus chapter 21. So we start to get into some of the regulations and rules that God has set in place for his people and that the Israelites were to follow. Exodus 22. If someone steals an ox or sheep and then kills or sells it, the thief must pay back five oxen for each ox stolen and four sheep for each sheep stolen. If a thief is caught in the act of breaking into a house and is struck and killed in the process, the person who killed the thief is not guilty of murder. But if it happens in daylight, the one who killed the thief is guilty of murder. A thief who is caught must pay in full for everything he stole. If he cannot pay, he must be sold as a slave to pay for his theft. If someone steals an ox or a donkey or a sheep and it is found in the thief's possession, then the thief must pay double the value of the stolen animal. If an animal is grazing in a field or vineyard and the owner lets it stray into someone else's field to graze, then the animal's owner must pay compensation from the best of his own grain or grapes. If you are burning thorn bushes and the fire gets out of control and spreads into another person's field, destroying the sheaves or the uncut grain or the whole crop, the one who started the fire must pay for the lost crop. Suppose someone leaves money or goods with a neighbor for safekeeping and they are stolen from the neighbor's house. If the thief is caught, the compensation is double the value of what was stolen. But if the thief is not caught, the neighbor must appear before God who will determine if he stole the property. Suppose there is a dispute between two people who both claim to own a particular ox, donkey, sheep, articles of clothing, or any lost property. Both parties must come before God, and the person whom God declares guilty must pay double compensation to the other. Now suppose someone leaves a donkey, ox, sheep, or any other animal with a neighbor for safekeeping, but it dies or is injured or is taken away, and no one sees what happened. The neighbor must then take an oath in the presence of the Lord. If the Lord confirms that the neighbor did not steal the property, the owner must accept the verdict and no payment will be required. But if the animal was indeed stolen, the guilty person must pay compensation to the owner. If it was torn to pieces by a wild animal, the remains of the carcass must be shown as evidence and no compensation will be required. If someone borrows an animal from a neighbor and it is injured or dies when the owner is absent, the person who borrowed it must pay full compensation. But if the owner was present, no compensation is required, and no compensation is required if the animal was rented, for this loss is covered by the rental fee. If a man seduces a virgin who is not engaged to anyone and has sex with her, he must pay the customary bride price and marry her. But if her father refuses to let him marry her, the man must still pay him an amount equal to the bride price of a virgin. You must not allow a sorceress to live. Anyone who has sexual relations with an animal must certainly be put to death. Anyone who sacrifices to any god other than the Lord must be destroyed. You must not mistreat or oppress foreigners in any way. Remember, you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. You must not exploit a widow or an orphan. If you exploit them in any way and they cry out to me, then I will certainly hear their cry. My anger will blaze against you and I will kill you with the sword. Then your wives will be the widows and your children the fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people who are in need, do not charge interest as a money lender would. If you take your neighbor's cloak as security for a loan, you must return it before sunset. This coat may be the only blanket your neighbor has. How can a person sleep without it? If you do not return it and your neighbor cries out to me for help, then I will hear, for I am merciful. You must not dishonor God or curse any of your rulers. You must not hold anything back when you give me offerings from your crops and your wine. You must give me your firstborn sons. You must also give me the firstborn of your cattle, sheep, and goats. But leave the newborn animal with its mother for seven days, then give it to me on the eighth day. You must be my holy people. 
Therefore, do not eat any animal that has been torn up and killed by wild animals. Throw it to the dogs. And so that is the end of Exodus 22. We see the rules that God has set forth for the protection of property and social responsibility. So let's see what other rules they have to follow in Exodus chapter 23. You must not pass along false rumors. You must not cooperate with evil people by lying on the witness stand. You must not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you are called to testify in a dispute, do not be swayed by the crowd to twist justice and do not slant your testimony in favor of a person just because that person is poor. If you come upon your enemy's ox or donkey that is strayed away, take it back to its owner. If you see that the donkey of someone who hates you has collapsed under its load, do not walk by. Instead, stop and help. In a lawsuit, you must not deny justice to the poor. Be sure never to charge anyone falsely with evil. Never sentence an innocent or blameless person to death, for I never declare a guilty person to be innocent. Take no bribes, for a bribe makes you ignore something that you clearly see. A bribe makes even a righteous person twist the truth. You must not oppress foreigners. You know what it is like to be a foreigner, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. Plant and harvest your crops for six years, but let the land be renewed and lie uncultivated during the seventh year. Then let the poor among you harvest whatever grows on its own. Leave the rest for the wild animals to eat. The same applies to your vineyards and olive groves. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but on the seventh day you must stop working. This gives your ox and your donkey a chance to rest. It also allows your slaves and the foreigners living among you to be refreshed. Pay close attention to all my instructions. You must not call on the name of any other gods. Do not even speak their names. Each year you must celebrate three festivals in my honor. First, celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. For seven days, the bread you eat must be made without yeast, just as I commanded you. Celebrate this festival annually at the appointed time in the early spring, in the month of Abib, for that is the anniversary of your departure from Egypt. No one may appear before me without an offering. Second, celebrate the festival of harvest when you bring me the first crops of your harvest. Finally, celebrate the festival of the final harvest at the end of the harvest season when you have harvested all the crops from your fields. At these three times each year, every man in Israel must appear before the sovereign, the Lord. You must not offer the blood of my sacrificial offerings together with any baked goods containing yeast, and do not leave the fat from the festival offerings until the next morning. As you harvest your crops, bring the very best of the first harvest to the house of the Lord your God. You must not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. See, I am sending an angel before you to protect you on your journey and lead you safely to the place I have prepared for you. Pay close attention to him and obey his instructions. Do not rebel against him, for he is my representative, and he will not forgive your rebellion. But if you are careful to obey him, following all my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemies, and I will oppose those who oppose you. For my angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites. So you may live there, and I will destroy them completely. You must not worship the gods of these nations or serve them in any way or imitate their evil practices. Instead, you must utterly destroy them and smash their sacred pillars. You must serve only the Lord your God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water and I will protect you from illness. There will be no miscarriages or infertility in your land and I will give you long full lives. I will send my terror ahead of you and create panic among all the people whose lands you invade. I will make all your enemies turn and run. I will send terror ahead of you to drive out the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites, but I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals would multiply and threaten you. I will drive them out a little at a time until your population has increased enough to take possession of the land. And I will fix your boundaries from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the Eastern wilderness to the Euphrates River. I will hand over to you the people now living in the land and you will drive them out ahead of you. 
Make no treaties with them or their gods. They must not live in your land or they will cause you to sin against me. If you serve their gods, you will be caught in the trap of idolatry. So that is the end of Exodus chapter 23. Um, God has given them more rules to follow. And he's also um, gone over the covenant with them about how he will bless them and how he will keep them in the promised land that he is sending them to. Exodus chapter 24. Then the Lord instructed Moses, come up here to me and bring along Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of Israel's elders. All of you must worship from a distance. Only Moses is allowed to come near to the Lord. The others must not come near me, and none of the other people are allowed to climb up the mountain with him. Then Moses went down to the people and repeated all the instructions and regulations the Lord had given him. All the people answered with one voice, We will do everything the Lord has commanded. Then Moses carefully wrote down all the Lord's instructions. Early the next morning, Moses got up and built an altar at the foot of the mountain. He also set up 12 pillars, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent some of the young Israelite men to present burnt offerings and to sacrifice bulls as a peace offering to the Lord. Moses drained half the blood from these animals into basins. The other half he splattered against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it aloud to the people. Again, they all responded. We will do everything the Lord has commanded. We will obey. Then Moses took the blood from the basins and splattered it over the people, declaring, Look, this blood confirms the covenant the Lord has made with you and given you these instructions. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 elders of Israel climbed up the mountain. There they saw the God of Israel. Under his feet there seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue lapis lazuli, as clear as the sky itself. And though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. In fact, they ate a covenant meal, eating and drinking in his presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain. Stay there, and I will give you the tablets of stone on which I have inscribed the instructions and commands so you can teach the people. So Moses and his assistant Joshua set out, and Moses climbed up the mountain of God. Moses told the elders, Stay here and wait for us until we come back. Aaron and her are here with you. If anyone has a dispute while I'm gone, consult with them. Then Moses climbed up the mountain, and the cloud covered it. And the glory of the Lord settled down on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses from inside the cloud. To the Israelites at the foot of the mountain, the glory of the Lord appeared at the summit like a consuming fire. Then Moses disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. He remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. All right, so that is the end of Exodus 24. We see um, Moses going up to the mountain with a select group of people to sit with the Lord and speak with the Lord and have a covenantal meal with the Lord. And then Moses goes further up into the mountain to talk with God for 40 days. So let's see what happens while Moses is gone for these 40 days in Exodus chapter 25. The Lord said to Moses, tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings, accept the contributions from all whose hearts are moved to offer them. Here is a list of sacred offerings you may accept from them, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat hair for cloth, tanned ram skins and fine goat skin leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, onyx stones and other gemstones to be set in the ephod and the priest chest plate. Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. Have the people make an ark of acacia wood a sacred chest 45 inches long, 27 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it inside and out with pure gold and run a molding of gold all around it. Cast four gold rings and attach them to its four feet, two rings on each side. Make poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Insert the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. These carrying poles must stay inside the rings. Never remove them. When the ark is finished, place inside it 
the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then make the ark's cover, the place of atonement, from pure gold. It must be 45 inches long and 27 inches wide. Then make two cherubim from hammered gold and place them on the two ends of the atonement cover. Mold the cherubim on each end of the atonement cover, making it all of one piece of gold. The cherubim will face each other and look down on the atonement cover. With their wings spread above it, they will protect it. Place inside the ark the stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, which I will give to you. Then put the atonement cover on top of the ark. I will meet with you there and talk to you from above the atonement cover between the gold cherubim that hover over the ark of the covenant. From there, I will give you my commands for the people of Israel. Then make a table of acacia wood, 36 inches long, 18 inches wide, and 27 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and run a gold molding around the edge. Decorate it with a three inch border all around and run a gold molding along the border. Make four gold rings for the table and attach them at the four corners next to the four legs. Attach the rings near the border to hold the poles that are used to carry the table. Make these poles from acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Make special containers of pure gold for the table, bowls, ladles, pitchers, and jars to be used in pouring out liquid offerings. Place the bread of the presence on the table to remain before me at all times. Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. Make the entire lampstand and its decorations of one piece, the base, center stem, lamp cups, buds, and petals. Make it with six branches going out from the center stem, three on each side. Each of the six branches will have three lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. Craft the center stem of the lampstand with four lamp cups shaped like almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. There will also be an almond bud beneath each pair of branches where the six branches extend from the center stem. The almond buds and branches must all be of one piece with the center stem, and they must be hammered from pure gold. Then make the seven lamps for the lampstand and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. All right, so that is the end of Exodus 25. We see um, the conversation that Moses is having on the mountain of God while he's on the mountain for these 40 days. Um, so he is getting the instructions for the tabernacle that the Israelites are to build so that he can dwell among his people. But all right, that is the end of day 19 of our Bible in a Year reading plan. Um, I pray that you were blessed by this reading. I hope that you will go back and kind of do a little more research into the laws and the regulations that were given during this time period. Um, there is a, a lot of different laws and regulations given um, in Exodus that we just kind of skim over, but it's nice to go back and read them and maybe just kind of dig a little deeper into the regulations that were being proposed at that time by the Lord. But all right, don't forget to like the video. Leave me a comment if you have something to say about the regulations. Um, I would love to hear what you, you guys' thoughts on the regulations that God has put forth thus, thus far. But all right, have a great day and I will see you um, on the next day for day 20, which is our catch-up day of the Bible in the Year reading plan. All right, bye.